What's going on guys? This is Mr. Marklevitz coming to you to talk about Unit 4, Lesson 2, The Voice Track. And uh, how do we get nice, clear, clean audio for our films? Um, for instance, right now, you are hearing my voice, and it sounds, I guess, as decent as it can, um, but I'm not using the microphone on my camera, because if I did, you would hear everything, and my voice wouldn't sound nearly as crisp or clear as it does. You would probably hear the furnace in the background, or maybe the cars driving by on the street outside. Um, but because I have a shotgun microphone directly above me, off camera, it's picking up my voice, and that voice is being recorded on what's called a Zoom recorder. Now, this isn't terribly expensive. Um, it would run you a couple hundred dollars. Um, but there are ways that, you know, even amateur student filmmakers can record nice, clean dialogue, and we're going to talk about that today. Uh, we're going to talk about something called direct address, which is what I'm doing right now, directly addressing you, my audience, and then we'll talk about voiceover narrations, which you're probably already familiar with, but you got to know when not to use them, because they tend to be a little overused. Anyway, recording dialogue. One, uh, invest in some sort of microphone. All right, again, you don't want to use the microphone on your camera. That comes with all sorts of different problems. If you have the money to invest in some sort of shotgun microphone or maybe a lavalier microphone to, to conceal on uh, your subject, by all means do that. But you can also just use your cell phone, right? Uh, if you plug in your headphone jack into the cell phone and hide that somewhere uh, on the person's body, you can, you know, re record your audio that way. Um, you can do it through earbuds, whatever. Um, but the, the goal is that you want to get that microphone as close to the subject as possible, just off camera. So if you've ever seen the person, it's called a boom pole, uh, holding that big, long pole off camera with the microphone at the end of it, that's what they're doing. Again, they're, they're trying to get that microphone as close to the actors as possible because recording good, clean dialogue is so important. Okay, um, room tone. If you're going to record dialogue, the first thing that you want to do in any scene is just quiet the room and hit record. Hear that room tone? And you might want to do this for about 30 seconds. Why do you want to do this? Well, in editing, sometimes there tends to be gaps of dialogue or gaps in time that you need to fill with just something, okay? You don't want to have no audio. You don't want to have nothing there because sometimes nothing can be deafening, all right? But if you record room tone, then you can kind of fill in those gaps with that sound of the room and it will help kind of ease those awkward silent moments. It, it'll sound more naturalistic and it won't be so jarring when all of a sudden there's nothing. Okay, uh, clapboards. You've seen them, right? Uh, I don't have one on me, but they're those boards and somebody comes in and they clap it and they say action, right? A lot of people think that that means that we start talking, right? Like, oh, the scene has started, begin. Um, that has nothing to do <laughs> with, uh, with, with cueing the actors. That has everything to do with marking the scenes and being a audi an audi audible and visual cue um, for the person recording sound, okay? They see the visual clap, and then that clapping sound obviously gets picked up by the microphone and now when you get into post-production and you start syncing your video with your audio all you have to do is line up the visual cue of the hand coming down and the audio cue of hearing that clap sound and now your audio and your video are in sync. Computers have matured so <laughs> amazingly in the last couple of years that you don't even really need one of those clipboards anymore because your editing software will automatically sync your video with your audio for you. But hey, they're still fun, right? Different types of microphones I talked about. I have a shotgun mic above me. It's just a long cylindrical microphone that's very directional. There's a garbage truck going on outside right now. 
I hope you don't hear it. You shouldn't be able to hear it because of the microphone that I'm using. Um, certainly there are smaller microphones like a lavalier mic or a lapel mic that you can clip to somebody. Uh, there are condenser microphones or dynamic microphones, stick microphones, uh, which are great for you know uh, a host or some sort of news reporter or anchor holding the microphone. Not great to attach those to a boom pole and hang them above somebody, but hey, if that's all you got, then you might as well use it. It's certainly better than your camera mic. Um, and yeah, your phone too. Again, Again, you can just go into your voice recorder app on your phone, get that phone as close to the person off camera as you can, uh, or uh, have it feeding through your uh, headphone jack, whatever, and you'll get some pretty good dialogue. Uh, and hey, let's say you didn't get great dialogue. Let's say you filmed and it's just not good. Well, you can always bring your actors back and do dubbing, or what's called ADR, Automated Dialogue Replacement. That's when you have an actor come back into some sort of sound studio and literally watch their performance and redub the lines or have them say the lines again. There's the old adage, hey, if you could do it in the, if you could do it in the field, you can do it in, the, in the, the sound booth. Is that a thing? I think that's a thing people say. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Um, Sometimes you'd, you'd be surprised how many feature films uh, rely on dubbing or ADR in order to get the, uh, the, the dialogue uh, recorded cleanly and properly. Direct addresses. Sometimes actors like to speak directly to the camera, right? It's very Shakespearean. It's very theatrical. Um, we see this a lot uh, when, uh, you know, Actors are trying to, uh, what's called breaking that fourth wall, okay? Um, and uh, speaking directly to the camera, speaking directly to the audience, almost acknowledging that they're in a film, okay? And we see this in great examples. Uh, Woody Allen did it for comedic effect uh, in Annie Hall. I would never want to belong to any club that would have someone like me for a member. And in Spike Lee's uh, Do the Right Thing, he used it as almost an accusatory method, right? Uh, this is a whole movie about race relations, and he has the character speaking directly into the camera uh, and spitting these racial stereotypes. And I guess, you know, for the effect of having the audience understand what it feels like to be... Uh, discriminated against or what it feels like uh, to be criticized uh, for the color of your skin or your nationalities, whatever it is. Uh, and then voiceover narrations. V voiceovers typically, you know, it, it's like a direct address, uh, a character from the film speaking directly uh, to the audience. But with a direct address, that character is on camera. With the voiceover, you're just hearing their voice. Um, you know, think of it like a first-person narrator in, in, in a piece of literature or something. Um, not all of the information, not all of the story details can be conveyed simply through uh, images. Sometimes you need to have that voice that kind of guides the audience through. Sometimes it works wonderfully, um, like in this example from Days of Heaven. I met this guy named Ding Dong. He told me the whole earth is going up in flames. Flames will come out of here and then. They'll just rise up. The mountains are going to go up in big flames. The water's going to rise in flames. And sometimes it doesn't work so well, like in this example from the original theatrical release of Blade Runner. Recreational facility. They don't advertise for killers in a newspaper. That was my profession. Ex-cop. Ex-Blade Runner. And famously, in that example of Blade Runner, uh, Ridley Scott, the director, hated it so much that when it came time to do a director's cut version years later, um, they just got rid of the voiceover track because, if anything, it, it, it took away from just the, the, the feel of the film. Anyway, how to record dialogue, the use of direct address, and voiceover narration. I hope you learned something today. And, uh, yeah, email me if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys later.